Welcome back to Ritual Hobby and Art. This is the world in 1635. It's a reproduction of a map uh, reproduced on the engraving of uh, William. It's not William, it's Willem. Uh, Janzoon Blue in the Cornell University Library. Uh, I bought this many years ago at a museum in the gift store. Uh, came in this fancy acrylic tube. It had some red caps on the ends, but they've since cracked and broken years ago. I want to say I got this when I was in junior high, um, way back in the 1980s, maybe early 90, well, 1980s. And it's a very interesting map. I'll scan, I'll get closer so you can have a better look. But it's sort of the, you know, the look of the world at the time based on uh, colonization based on uh, the interpretation of those who <clears throat> I guess the understanding of the world based on what they thought I will tell you Antarctica and Australia do not seem to appear on here I mean there are views from the, the bottom and top of the world but it doesn't seem to show the Arctic circle or any of that so they they definitely seem to understand that Africa is there, South America, the Middle East, Europe, uh, Asia, North America. North America is really more about what's along the coast than anything else. Uh, it certainly doesn't look like we see it today in modern maps and that sort of thing. Along the bottom here we have the seven wonders of the natural of, of the world. Seven wonders of the world, uh, the hanging gardens of Babylon, the uh, Colossus at Rhodes, the pyramids, kind of odd looking. They obviously hadn't gone down and seen them when they made this uh, engraving. There were a couple of te uh, temples, a uh, temple to Diana, and there was another one. There was uh, the statue, I think, of Olympia or Jup Jupiter, and then the uh, lighthouse, the big lighthouse. I want to say Alexandria. It says uh, Pharos, but I believe it's the uh, lighthouse of Alexandria. And so that's what's located down there. Along the side here, we have the four elements, fire, air, water, and earth, and, uh, and their descriptions. Along the top, we have the, um, the names of the gods, of the signs, uh, the planets, that sort of thing. We have Luna. Mercury, Venus, Sol, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And so and there's uh, their symbols and, and that sort of thing. I, I, don't, I don't remember a lot of that from classical um, school, that kind of thing. But it's all in there. Along this other end, we have the, uh, month, or the seasons of the year. So spring, summer, autumn. And winter and in the classical form it usually starts with spring and ends with winter uh, and that, I've seen that in statuary and in paintings when they show the four seasons that's usually how they're uh, how they're listed and then of course this is the the world as they see it and uh, you have uh, Nova Francia New France uh, down here would have been a French colony in, I assume a lot of the 1607, now this is 1635 map, 1607 is when the colony of Virginia started at Jamestown. So some of the colonies may be shown here. I don't know if this is actually what we know today is uh, Canada. Uh, everything's kind of just jammed in here. This, what we know today is the Mexican Peninsula is here. Uh, but, you know, you know, this is probably Sierra Nevada. This, that shows up here. Uh, and then further up. They had not done a lot of um, work here, so they didn't know about Alaska uh, or some of that area to the north. And um, as I said, there is no Australia or Antarctica on this map. It's always interesting some of the uh, pictures that they put in the water. Uh, things like the sailing ships of the time, sea creatures. Sea creatures are always interesting, you know, what, what they think exist. Uh, I don't see any giant squids or anything like that. I'm just looking at things with their heads coming out and, and maybe some, um, oh, what do you call it, wings, 
wings on these things. Based on real animals that they just misinterpreted. Uh, a lot of these were based on giant, uh, just, just large uh, octopus, large squid, uh, things like that. Over here you see uh, Europe, the uh, United Kingdom, Canada, France. What is today Canada, France? It was not that at this time. Uh, Africa is... The shape of the continent is very well um, shaped, but, you know, there's a lot going on inside of this. And I don't know all the colonization, but there's a lot of location names, uh, which are really is surprising. Here's Madagascar. Uh, the Middle East, you can see, uh, you know, where what is now Saudi Arabia, Yemen. You get into uh, Asia, uh, but you do see... Looking at uh, Asia, you definitely can make out the India sub subcontinent, uh, getting down to Thailand, Vietnam, down, you know, but things like Java, uh, Indonesia is kind of just all jumbled in. Japan is just a sliver. China is just, you know, it's, it's all based on whatever they thought at the time, and there's not a lot of um, you know, information like we have today. Uh, Marco Polo would have done his um, his work back in the uh, long before this, long before 1635, and so a lot of this information would have come from his explorations, his journeys. Then you have um, then you have just general information in the box. I do not read Latin, so I'm not even going to attempt to read any of that information. So overall, it's an interesting map, an interesting document of uh, that time period. And um, certainly, uh, it's interesting to look at, get out, and just kind of look it over. It's obviously, because it's not an antique, you can, you know, you can really, you can touch it and not worry about breaking it apart. It is on a certain interesting, I'm not going to call this parchment paper, but it's a certain type of paper. It does say printed in the USA, so... It's American made um, based on this uh, original piece. I don't know what I paid for it. I want to say, oh, 10 or $12. I mean, it probably wasn't that much. Back then, that would have been more than that is today. But anyway, that's the world in 1635.